Hello and welcome back to another episode of Divinity Original Sins 2, the Definitive Edition. My name is Saiken and we're playing Honor Mode Plus uh, on the highest difficulty, but just with a twist, we're leveling the enemies to our level and giving them two levels on top of it. It is time for the Historian. I told you that we wanted to uh, go and assault Bacchus Rex's palace, one of the most interesting fights here is the Historian because it's a purely fire-based fight and you can uh, learn a lot out of proper placement. He will spawn a couple of additional enemies, all of them are essentially fire-based, so we prepared, as you can see, the entire uh, uh, the entire floor here with water. In order to open that door, you can go through a really, really, really lengthy process of jumping back and forth and back and forth, or you just position one person here, use um, teleportation magic to get to here and to here, and grab the skull over here. That's the easier way of doing it. Um, takes you about a fraction of the time that you would usually take. Um, let's take a look at uh, the characters real quick. I upgraded uh, Ifan. As you can see, he is now rocking the boat with 500 hit points and over 300 armor, uh, plus 300 magical armor. Looks a little bit um, uh, strange, but uh, he gets the job done. We skilled him pretty much, or he skills uh, still the same. Uh, skilled the same. Um, he will be our crowd controller. We have Lowe's. Uh, Lowe's now has more armor than before. Not much changed in her build. She's still a support character. Probably the most noticeable portion is we got some items that got us over uh, 10 summoning, so you will see bigger summonings now. We got a new bow. So the um, damage of Sibyl jumped from 70 per shot to 150. I am going I'm going to expect that that's going to hurt a lot. And Saiken, last but not least, is still skilled uh, with um, water and electricity magic. I want to get back to fire, but I wanted to still show you how this one here is done. Um, we spliced in a bit of uh, Huntsman instead of uh, going all the way to Polymorph, so basically copying, uh, capping Polymorph at 5, getting 2 points of Huntsman just to get a couple of good skills, and that's going to be more important for uh, for the Fire Mage anyways, because Huntsman um, has excellent sk um, skills for Fire Mage, um, namely the hybrid skills Throw Dust and the Fire Trap, are absolutely fantastic, really, really good skills. So that'll we will obviously respec him after this dungeon here, and uh, you'll see that it was a worthwhile investment. Anyways, without further ado, we should buff up Ifan. It's now at four hundred. Oh wait a second! Before we buff him up. Let's pre-summon. There we go. That's an that's a decent summoning. All right, we infused it. Ethan is ready, and let's talk to the historian. There we go. Instant uh, start into the fight. You can see everyone levels up as well. And Ethan is, of course, on the receiving end. We're going to pull back just a bit, so I don't want to go too far in. And one of the most important pieces for this particular fight is don't cluster up. So, that's a pretty good combat uh, formation. Ifan, we do have a Huntsman up here, melee fighter, another fire mage. All three of them uh, can be dangerous. Specifically, the Huntsman and the fire mage tend to be a problem. So, what we're going to do is let's use. Oh, the fire mage is fortified. 
great. Well, in which case the Huntsman just uh, volunteered to be the first victim. Putting the Huntsman down here. And then afterwards, essentially starting to get rid of his armor. Good. The Huntsman has a high initiative. That's why he can still uh, go early. And boy, oh boy, they are hitting hard. Gotta be careful, he has all of uh, the AoE based skills. So, suggestion here. Suggestion here is we're going to keep him busy with our incarnate. If you inspect them, you're going to see they have a critical weakness against water magic. Um, so all of the water skills should work reasonably well. We're going to block the entrance here. And now it's time for us to start unloading on him. Essentially standing in water, all of our water skills are way cheaper. Nice. That's some really decent damage right there. And this should freeze him. Yep, solidly frozen. Very nice. Good. Let's make sure Sibyl is not going to get nuked. Since these are undead, might as well use a bit of our magic to damage them. He's now continuing to regenerate and takes 90 damage per turn. And I'd like to propose that we're summoning totems, water totems preferably. 150 damage is good. So let's see what uh, Sibyl's shots are going to do. First things first, taking water arrows. Holy shit, that's 300 damage. <laughs> Lovely. Very good. I like it. We're spreading out the water totems just a bit. Buffing everyone. And just in case, let's give Seville a bit of magical armor. I do have the feeling that we're going to get a, a, eat a fire spell or two. All right, in terms of crowd control... Let's knock him down. And afterwards, I would propose that we're getting ready to deal with uh, the last enemy over here. We might as well teleport him in. We're keeping our, um, our action points so that next round we can deal with him. Hits for 300. And there we go, that's an insta-kill. <sighs> told you it's gonna suck but of course I was nowhere like just how much it does moving over here to 
get a clean shot. We could use some high ground. I mean, over here would be nice, but then again, difficult to get away from it. So let's jump over here. Let's go into haste ourselves. Taking away all of his physical armor. Time to knock him down and after he's knocked down we are going to take care of those. There's only so much you can do against a, sing a simple one-shot. I can tell you on um, normal honor mode difficulty he deals some damage but he's not nuking for 600. That's rather unusual. Helping Lowe's to get back up to full. Because she will need to teleport him in. Hasting Lowe's and... We can already start taking away some of his armor. I think that wouldn't be uh, magical armor. That wouldn't be the worst decision. So, in terms of how do we want to deal with that? Um, first things first. Teleporting this guy over here. Makes an absolute amount of sense. That's good. Sibyl will focus to get down the Scorcher first. A, he deals more damage. And B, he essentially already has no um, armor anymore. Like to resummon. And Lois begins to heal herself. Okay, so we knock down the sorcerer. And start working on the melee character. Who of course decides to phoenix dive, so we need to teleport him again. Luckily we do have enough teleportation magic available. Lowe's begins to take a little bit better position here. And let's heal everyone plus inspire everyone a little bit. Very good. Oh 
So we could use adrenaline this turn. Going for the sorcerer. And just to make sure that we're okay, chickening the sorcerer. Finally, we took away the magical armor, and now we can continue to crowd control the warrior. Standing on, uh, standing on electrified water, by the way, counts for both the electricity as well as water uh, for the elemental affinity so we currently can use both of the spells a bit cheaper i think we're fine for now let's try to get the scorcher down ah uh, we can't this guy is in the way. Nope, we can't hit him. Anyways, isn't the worst uh, idea ever because now his uh, physical resistance is also gone. And for another totem, and I think we're right uh, back in. We stabilized uh, this. It was pretty unfortunate to get one shot. There we go. So, we still have the swordsman, but we can definitely control him rather easily. So since we have a limited amount of of uh, actions this turn, might as well just attack him. He's almost out of physical armor now as well. Good. And there he's frozen again. Wonderful. Taking away the remainder of his physical armor. And hopefully this time we can kill the Scorcher. Yep, there we go. It's one down. Good. I think now it's really just clean up. We could even dominate him to make sure that he couldn't do anything. There we go. So that has been the Historian. Interesting fight. If you prepare it correctly, there isn't much to be afraid about. Oh, and they got some pretty good uh, loot items, specifically the potions, make a lot of sense. Let's get rid of the oil here. If you charge in, you you will find yourself in a really, really um, difficult situation. So in terms of the flames, the way I remember it is you 
had to bless him and then you could extinguish the flames. Let's see if that still works. Oh, I remember. You had to bless the water. Uh, yes, no, maybe. I will look that up and tell you in the next uh, video. So, essentially, once you get him, uh, once you, um, you remove the hellfire from him, this is where the entrance of Becker's Rex Temple lies. And that's where we are going to fight the Necromancers next. Uh, that is all for this video. It was a faster uh, fight than usual. A couple of, uh, a few more fights. It's going to be a dragon and a nice uh, nature-based fight uh, soon. And then we're slowly but surely moving to the end fight because we have beaten everything on this island. Thank you so much for watching. As, uh, as always, uh, if you uh, feel strongly about the video, leave a comment and a like down below. And see you in our next episode. Bye-bye.